Hi, my name is Joel Ivy Johnson, and in this video, I'm going to be doing an introduction to Silverlight. Most of this video is based off of Silverlight 3. Silverlight 4 is coming within the next few months. It, but I had enough people asking me about Silverlight already so that it was advantageous enough to go ahead and make this video to answer some of their questions. And I'll make a new one once Silverlight 4 becomes available. Now, in making this video, I'm assuming that you already have a familiarity with .NET and .NET concepts, and you have an understanding for uh, web development concepts. Uh, within this video, I'll be defining exactly what is Silverlight. I'll talk about the differences between Silverlight and WPF, um, and the requirements for developing for Silverlight and the compatibility that it has with the different browsers and operating systems available. I'll also go into talking about some concepts that um, are new um, for, so that are going to be new for people that have never looked at Silverlight before. Now exactly what is WPF? WPF, the acronym, stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. It's a higher level graphics API and within this API you can define geometric shapes such as lines, rectangles, circles, um, or even shapes uh, or even arbitrary shapes, but it also lets you define user interface elements and their layout. WPF takes advantage of DirectX, so if the user has a decent video accelerator within their uh, computer, then d the WPF rendering will make use of that. If there is not a good GPU within their system, it will still fall back on software emulation or in order to um, get done whatever it is that it needs to get done. It uses a web layout like model where um, you declare the elements that you want to lay out on the screen within a language that looks a lot like um, HTML. It's an XML-based language called XAML. Um, something else about uh, WPF is it contains support for animation. Within conventional programming environments, if you wanted to do animation, you had to take care of setting up a timing mechanism yourself, and whenever it was time to render the next frame, you had to write the code to render the next the frame yourself. Within WPF, you can just start off by defining how you want things to look initially, uh, what, you want, what you want them to change to, and over what course of time that they are going to make that transition. And the WPF system will take care of all of the everything that's required for animating that. It will take care of the timing, it will take care of regenerating the screens, and uh, as a developer, there's not much that you have to worry about other than just uh, defining how you want the inter how you want the animation to look. Um, exactly how it goes about exactly how it works is something that's really not of much concern to you. Now what is Silverlight? Silverlight is an extended subset of WPF. And I say subset because Silverlight borrows from some of the elements that you'll find within WPF um, and extended because it also adds some things that are unique to W that are unique to Silverlight that you will not find within WPF. Silverlight is primarily made for making rich internet applications. You can also use it for making standalone applications. And Silverlight uh, is also a cross-platform technology. Um, and by that, I mean that it will run on several different versions of Windows, uh, including XP, uh, Server 2003, Windows Vista. And it's not on my slide, but it will also work on Windows 7. Um, it will work on Mac OS X. Uh, Silverlight 2 will work on Linux. And there's forthcoming support for the Series 60 uh, devices and for, win for the Windows Phone 7 series devices. Now, for browser compatibility on the Windows machines, uh, Silverlight is compatible with Internet Explorer 5.5 and later. Uh, it's compatible with the first version of Firefox and later. It's compatible with Safari. And with Silverlight 4, it will be compatible with Chrome. You can actually use Silverlight uh, 3 within Chrome now, but it is not officially supported. So to develop with Silverlight, um, if you're a developer, you want to have either Visual Studio 2008 or Visual Studio 2010. Um, now with Visual Studio 2008, there's a few additional things that you'll need to install so that it will work with Silverlight, and I'll give you the URLs for that in just a moment. If you cannot get your hands on Visual Studio, then you will want to grab Visual Web Developer Express with Service Pack 1. Um, you can also use that for Silverlight development. If you're a designer, or even still, even if you're a developer, uh, you probably want to get your hands on the Expression Suite. It has a number of tools that can aid you with Silverlight development. Um, it has Expressions Blend, which is used for editing XAML. 
um, Expressions Web, which is used for managing websites and editing HTML. Uh, the Deep Zoom Composer is kind of hard to describe. I'll get into what that's about in a later presentation. Um, you have Expressions Design for creating graphics assets. Uh, the Expressions Encoder for encoding things in a format that can be uh, streamed to Silverlight. And actually I'm using Expressions Encoder right now in creating this presentation. And then there's also Expressions Media for managing your media assets. And there are third-party tools that are available that can be used to produce files that are consumable by your Silverlight project. Uh, Adobe Illustrator is one with, a, with the uh, installation of a plugin. It can be used to output um, XAML files. And there's also a third-party product called Swift 3D that can be used to create um, Silverlight files. Now, I mentioned that you need to install a few other things if you're using Visual Studio 2008. Uh, you need to install the Silverlight tools for Visual Studio. Without those, whenever you try and create a new Silverlight project in Visual Studio, you'll find that the project template isn't there. Um, you'll want to install the Silverlight Toolkit. The Toolkit contains a great number of controls that are not present in Silverlight by default. And if you want to try Expression to Blend Out, uh, I've given you the URL so that you can download the 90-day trial version. Now, Silverlight and WPF have a lot of similarities, which uh, makes sense since um, Silverlight is derived from some of the things that make up WPF. They both use XAML uh, markup to declaratively build the UI, and they will both run within uh, someone's browser. Now, their differences are WPF is Windows-centric. While you can make a WPF application run within a browser, it will only run within a browser on a Windows machine. Uh, with Silverlight, as I mentioned earlier, it will run across a number of devices and a number of different operating systems and a number of different browsers. Um, so, so Silverlight is deployable to other operating systems and it uses a subset of the .NET framework. It's not using a compact framework, it's not using the desktop framework, it has its own version of the framework. At least that's how things are up to Silverlight 3. With Silverlight 4 we'll see this change a little, but I'll get into that in the Silverlight 4 presentation. But one of the consequences of Silverlight 3 and before having its own version of the framework is you cannot add references to non-Silverlight classes uh, within your Silverlight project. It simply won't work. And another difference between Silverlight and WPF is within Silverlight, um, you'll find that the 3D and advanced graphic features that are available within WPF are missing from Silverlight. Now there's a number of other technologies that you could use if you're trying to make a rich UI. You could use dynamic HTML with mixed in with some AJAX. You could use Java, Flash, or ActiveX. Um, if you try and use dynamic HTML, you'll find that some features within it are supported in some browsers or not within others. So you could end up with an inconsistent user experience. And Java and Flash interfaces, interfaces both sit on top of the browser. They don't really integrate into the browser. Um, for example, you could not create a button control within HTML that is overlapping on top of the Flash or overlapping on top of the Java. And if Java wanted to communicate with other elements, um, on the page, it is limited to doing that with it using JavaScript, whereas uh, Silverlight can actually interact with the other elements on the page and can be given access to the page's DOM. Uh, and if you ever use a Flash tools, you see that they were really made with a designer in mind. If you're coming from a pure development background, um, the first time you use Flash, you'll find that it's just not very developer friendly. ActiveX is pretty much IE and Windows centric. There's no, a number of other reasons why you probably don't want to use ActiveX for general development of a UI. Um, now there are some reasons where you might want to use it because it will give you, you can use it to get access to a lot of the local resources that the other technologies won't let you get. But in a general case scenario, ActiveX is not going to be the solution that you want to use.